Today we're going to be learning about the properties of whole numbers. The first property that we're going to look at is the commutative property. Now if you think about what the word commute means, commute means to travel, so to travel forwards and backwards between uh, two places. So when we're talking about the commutative property, we're looking at numbers moving around or traveling around within the, uh, the maths problem that we're, that we're solving. So we're going to start off by looking at an example with addition. We're going to compare two statements where we have 3 plus 2 and we have 2 plus 3. Okay. Now you probably already know that when you have two different numbers that are being added together, you can add them in any order that you want to. You will still end up getting the same thing. So, but let's just have a look at it anyway. So over here I've got 3 plus 2, so this is my 3 over here, and I'm adding 2 over here. And when I add those together, I end up with 5. Okay, so we had over here, 3 plus 2 gave us 5. Now, if we look at it the other way around, I can have my 2 first, and then my 3. And when I add those, I end up with my 2 and 3 still giving me the same total of 5. So I can say over here that 2 plus 3 is also equal to 5. So it doesn't matter which way around I write it, 3 plus 2 and 2 plus 3 will both give me 5. So I can say therefore that 3 plus 2 is the same as 2 plus 3. And this is showing us the commutative property that I can move the 2 and the 3 around when I'm adding them and it won't change the value that I get in the end anyway. So it won't change my overall answer. Okay, so now let's have a look at the commutative property with multiplication. Now in this example, we are going to be comparing again two different problems. One is 3 multiplied by 6 and the other one is 6 multiplied by 3. Okay, so in 3 multiplied by 6 I have basically got groups of 3 but there are 6 of those groups. So I can look at it like this. I've got six groups of three, like that. But if I look and see how many I have all together, then this gives me 18. So three multiplied by six is equal to 18. Now if we go and look at it the other way around and we say, now we have groups of six, And we have three of these groups. So I can group them like this and I have three groups of six. So here I have six times 3. And that also gives me, if you count all of those, you'll find that also gives you 18. So we can then say that 3 plus 3 multiplied by 6 is the same as 6 multiplied by 3. So I can say therefore 3 times 6 equals 6 times 3. Again, I can move them around and it didn't change the overall result. Okay, so when we are working with addition and multiplication, we can move things around 
and the overall answer, the final value that we get, won't change. Okay? But it doesn't work for subtraction and division. Okay, for subtraction and division, if you think about it, if I have 1, which is 5 minus 2, let me put this back down for you. Okay, if I have 5 minus 2, that gives me 3. But if I try and say 2 minus 5, so if I try and switch those around, then I have a problem because 5 is bigger than 2 and I'm now going to start going into negative numbers. So that will actually give me negative 3. So 5 minus 2 is not the same as 2 minus 5. So I can say therefore 5 minus 2 is not equal to 2 minus 5. We can't use the commutative law or the commutative property when we are working with subtraction. And the same thing applies for division. If I have 10 divided by 2, that gives me 5. But if I try and say 2 divided by 10, that's going to end up giving me 1 fifth, which obviously is not the same. So I can also say, therefore, that 10 divided by 2 is not equal to 2 divided by 10. So when we are working with subtraction and division, the commutative property doesn't apply. Okay. I'm going to now give you a couple of very quick questions that you're going to do. So in this example over here, you are going to use the commutative law to fill in the missing numbers. Now this shouldn't take very long at all, so I'm only going to give you one minute for this because you're just filling in those, those missing numbers. Okay, you should be done with that now, so let's go through that quickly. So the first one, A, we had 9 plus 7 equal to 7 plus something. Now, because of the commutative law, we can say, well, I know that if I switch those around, it's going to give me the same answer. So if I have still got a 7 over here, it should still equal the same thing if I have my other number as 9. So 9 plus 7 is the same as 7 plus 9. So you should have had a 9 over there. Then for B, we have 8 multiplied by 5 equals 5 multiplied by something. And the same thing applies. The commutative law says that I can switch them around. So if I start with the 8 and the times it by 5 over here, then over here, if I start with a 5, it's equal to the same thing if I multiply it by the 8 again. So you should have had an 8 over there. Okay, so that is the commutative law. Remember, the commutative law applies for multiplication and addition. It does not apply when you're working with subtraction and division. Okay, so now we're going to go and look at the next law, which is, or the next property, which is the associative property. Okay, so in the associative property, this is saying that we can group things in different ways, again, with addition and multiplication, and when we do, the result will be the same no matter what. Okay, so it doesn't matter how we group our things, we will still get the same result. So let's go and have a look at an example. Again, we're going to compare um, a couple of questions. So we've got 2 plus 3 plus 4. So here it's saying we're going to be doing the 2 plus 3 first and then we're going to add the 4. And here we've got 2 plus and then in brackets 
3 plus 4. So this time it's saying we must do the 3 plus 4 over there first and then add the 2. So we're grouping them differently and we're going to then do different parts of it first. Okay, so let's take a look at what this is going to look like for us. So over here I've got 2 and 3. And over here I've got 4. Okay, so if I add these, what I'm going to end up with is my 2 my 3 and my 4 so that is 2 plus 3 over here so I've grouped those together and I would work that out and that gives me 5 over there plus I've got 4 over here and if I work all of that out, I'll find that it gives me 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So the whole thing comes to 9 over there when I'm grouping the 2 and the 3 together. Now let's have a look at this example where we're going to group the 3 and the 4 together. So here I'm going to have the 2 on its own. And I'm going to have the 3 together with the 4. Okay, so when I add them, I'm still putting them all together. And I still end up with exactly the same result as I had when I grouped them this way over here. So I add those and, I equal, and it equals that. So here I had 2 plus 3 and 4 grouped together. And that also gave me 9. So now I can say, therefore, 2 plus 3 in brackets plus 4 is the same as 2 plus in brackets 3 plus 4. So it doesn't matter how I group those, so long as it is all addition, it doesn't matter how I group them, it will still give me the same result. Now this is useful because you can group things in whatever way is the most convenient for you at the time in terms of what will make it easier for you to actually do the calculation. Okay, so now let's have a look at the associative property with multiplication. Same thing, we're going to have, um, we're going to compare and we've got over here two multiplied by 4 times 3 in brackets and here we have 2 multiplied by 4 in brackets times 3. So it's the same numbers that are multiplying together but here I'm grouping the 4 and the 3 together and here I'm grouping the 2 and the 4 together so I'm going to be doing them in a different order. Okay, so the way this would look for me is I've got 4 times 3 so I've got 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. So that is 4 groups of 3. But I've got 2 of those groups. So I'm going to add another one of those. Or 2 of those sets rather. Okay, so here I've got two sets, or two groups, of 4 by 3 uh, sets. And that, if you add all of that up, I'm just going to put this like that so you can see it better again. Okay, so if I work that out, you will find that that all gives you 24. Okay, now let's have a look at the one where we group the 2 and the 4 together first. So here I have got 2 groups of 4 and then I have 3 of those all together. So I've got another set like that and another set like that.
Okay, so here I've got my groups of four. Each set has two groups of four, and there are three sets all together. Okay, and if you count all of those, you will find again that it, when you have two times four in brackets times three, you also get the same answer of 24. Okay, so now we can say therefore, two multiplied by four times three in brackets is the same as two times four in brackets multiplied by three. So it doesn't matter what, how I group those numbers that I'm multiplying together, I will still end up with the same result. So it's just like with the addition that we did, when you are adding, when you are multiplying, you can group things differently and you will end up with the same answer. Okay, so again, it's, it's useful in times when there, are, there may be a group that would actually make your life easier. Like if you have a 5 and a 2, then it might be easier to multiply those together and get 10, and then multiply whatever else you have by 10, rather than trying to multiply by 5, and then try and multiply it by 2 later on as well. So it does help to know that you can actually group these things um, in, sp in different ways, whatever suits you or whatever will make it easier for you. Okay, so that is addition and multiplication. Then, just like with the commutative property, subtraction and division do not work. It doesn't, the associative property also does not apply to subtraction and division. Okay, now I'm going to give you a practice activity again that you are going to go and practice this. Uh, there we go. Okay, so for this one, again, you're going to be using the law. So you're going to be using the associative law to fill in the missing numbers. Again, you shouldn't need very long. So I'm going to give you one minute to work on that. Okay, you should hopefully be done but with that by now. So let's go through that quickly. So in this one, we had five for question A. We had five plus in brackets, seven plus six, equal to in brackets, five plus seven plus, and then you had to fill in the missing number. So the associative law tells us that we can group things in different ways and it will give us the same result. So over here, I'm grouping the seven and the six together. And over here, and I have the 5 separate. Then over here, I've grouped the 5 with the 7, but it should still give me the same result if I still have that 6 over here. It's just grouped differently. So that is what you should have had for A. Then for B, we had 6 plus, in brackets, 8 plus 4, equal to 6 plus 8 in brackets, plus, and you have to fill in the number. Okay, so the same thing applies again. Here you had the 8 and the 4 grouped together. Here you have the 6 and the 8 grouped together. But it still will give you the same result so long as you've got that 4 there as well still. Okay, so that is what you had to do for that activity. Very nice and simple. Now we are going to go on to the next property and that is the distributive property. Now. To distribute something means to share out evenly between um, different people or things or whatever. So here we are going to be sharing out. That's what the distributive, distributive property is going to be doing. Okay, so we're going to look at, again, an example. We're going to be starting off by looking at multiplication. So first of all, when we are adding or subtracting two numbers, so like over here, 
uh, let me just make this bigger for you so you can see. So over here, we have got two numbers that we are adding. And then we're multiplying the answer of that by a third number. So here I'm multiplying that by a num another number. Then the distributive property says that it should be the same as if I were to multiply the 5 by the 4 and by the 3 separately. So I can distribute the 5 over the 4 and the 3. So I, I give it to both. Okay, so that is what the distributive property says should happen. So now we're going to do it as one where we add the 4 and the 3 first and see what we get. And then we're going to look at the 5 multiplied by 4 and the 5 multiplied by 3 and see if they are in fact the same. Okay, so that's what we're going to be looking at over here. Okay, so we have got five multiplied by four plus three. Okay, so this is kind of like saying that we've got four and we've got three. And they've kind of been added together, okay? And then I've got five groups like that. And the last one. Okay, so here I've got five groups. And in each group, I've got four and I've got three. And that four and the three together make seven. So when I have five groups of seven, I end up with 35. Okay, so that's what I get when I have the four and the three grouped together, when I add them together. Now let's have a look at the example where you have five multiplied by four, plus 5 multiplied by 3. Okay, so here I've got 5 groups of 4 and then I've also got 5 groups of 3. And then my last one over there and those are grouped like this so I've got my groups of four five of them and I've got my groups of three also five of them okay so now I've got over here five groups of four that gives me 20 and five groups of three that gives me 15 which also if I add those together will give me 35 as well so five multiplied by four plus five multiplied by three also gives me 35 so then I can say therefore five multiplied by four plus three is the same as five times four plus five times three. Now this is very useful in some situations because it helps sometimes to know that we can multiply a number by another number but we can split up one of those before we multiply it because sometimes it helps to split it up and it might be easier to multiply parts of the number rather than the whole number in one go. Okay so um, we can also look at it like this, we can say 5 times 4 plus 3 and then I could just do this and I could say okay so it must be 5 times 4 and it must also be 5 times 3 so it's plus, this is a plus there, 5 times 3. So that is how I would get to this over here. If I am given that I can change it to that by saying that the 5 must be distributed into the brackets and given to every single thing inside that bracket. Um, that had in but that that's separated by pluses or minuses. Okay, so that is using the distributive law with multiplication. Now we're going to look at the distributive law with 
division. Okay, now there are two different situations for division. And the distributive law will work in one situation and it will not work in the other. So you need to be careful about using the, the distributive law for division. Okay, when you are using the distributive law for division, it has to be in this order. So if I give you um, the example that you've got over here is 6 plus 4 in brackets divided by 2 and then I've got 6 divided by 2 plus 4 divided by 2. So if you look over here what's been done is this division has been distributed into the brackets and I've taken each thing inside the bracket and I'm dividing it by 2. So that is how the, distribu the distribution is being done here. Okay, so let's have a look at what we get if we were to just work this out. So 6 plus 4 is 10. We divide that by 2 and we get 5. Okay, then over here, if I have 6 divided by 2, I get 3 plus 4 divided by 2 and I get 2, which is also equal to 5. Okay, so when I had a, a sum two numbers added together and it also works with the difference if there are numbers being subtracted inside the brackets and I'm dividing that by something then I can distribute the division into the brackets okay so I can say therefore 6 plus 4 divided by 2 is the same as 6 divided by 2 plus 4 divided by 2 so I can distribute the division into the brackets in this situation Okay, now let's have a look at another example, but in this case, I've got the division where the bracket is after the division sign. So here I've got 60 divided by 2 plus 3, and I've got 60 divided by 2 plus 60, that should be divided by 3. Okay, 60 divided by 3. Let's just change that. There we go. Okay, so 60 divided by 3. So now we are going to work this out. So we've got 60 divided by 2 plus 3, which is 5. And when we work out 60 divided by 5, we get 12. Okay, then over here, I have to do it separately. So 60 divided by 2 is 30 plus 60 divided by 3, which is 20. So if I add those together, I get 50, which is a very different result. Okay, so when we have two things inside a bracket or more things inside a bracket that are being added and that bracket is being divided into something else, so something else is being divided by the bracket, then we can't say that they're equal to each other if we, do, if we distribute it. We can't distribute the division like that. It doesn't work. Okay, so I can't say that. So I can say over here that 60 divided by... 2 plus 3 is not equal to 60 divided by 2 plus 60 divided by 3. So the distributive law will only work for division if it is the bracket that is being divided by something else. Okay, so the bracket has to be before the division sign. It can't be after the division sign. If it is after the division sign, you can see over here that it doesn't work. It's not true. Okay, they're not equal to each other. Right, so that is the distributive property. Okay, so now I'm going to give you another activity to do. Where again, you are going to use the law that we've just learned, so the distributive law, you're going to use it to fill in the missing numbers again. So here you have got 5 multiplied by 6 minus 2 and then 5 multiplied by 6 minus 5 multiplied by something. You have to fill it in. So I'm going to give you one minute to, to do those two questions.
Okay, you should be done with that by now, so let's go through those quickly. So for question A, we had 5 times, in brackets, 6 minus 2 equals 5 times 6 minus 5 times something. You should have had over here a 2, because if I distribute this into the brackets over there, I say 5 times 6, and I say 5 times negative 2, so it's minus 5 times 2, because there's a minus there, so we have a minus over here, and that is a 2 over there. Okay, then question B, you should have had 10 minus 4 in brackets divided by 2 is the same as 10 divided by 2 minus 4 divided by something. You should over here have distributed the, four in, the 2 into the brackets, and that's where you get the 10 divided by 2. And then again, you put the 2 in the brackets there, and you have 4 divided by, or minus 4 divided by 2. So that's what you should have got for those two. Okay, uh, now we are going to go and look at the identity elements. Okay, so identity elements, um, they are numbers that you can combine with any other number using an operation, such as addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division, and it doesn't change the value of the second number. Okay, so we have got a specific identity element for addition and subtraction and a different one for multiplication and division. Okay, so for addition and subtraction, what can you add or subtract to or from any number and it won't change the value of that number? That would be zero. Okay, so our identity element for addition and subtraction is zero, okay? Because I can take any number and I can say six plus zero, or a hundred plus zero, or a thousand plus zero, or any number, and I can add zero, and it's not going to change the value of that number. So it will still be equal to six. Or I can do the same thing with subtraction. I can say six minus zero, and it also won't change the six. It'll still be equal to six. So I can add or subtract zero, and it won't change the value of the number that I am adding it or subtracting it to or from. Okay, so that is our identity element for addition and subtraction. Then we also have an identity element for multiplication and division. So a number that we can multiply any other number by or that we can divide any other number by and it won't change the value of the other number. Okay, so that would be the number one. So uh, the identity element for multiplication so the multiplication and division identity element is also oh sorry isn't also is one so there it is zero for addition and subtraction it is zero for multiplication and division it is one because if you think about with multiplication, you can say 6 multiplied by 1, and it's not going to change the value of the 6. It will still be equal to 6. And for division, I can say 6 divided by 1, and again, it won't change the value of the 6. It will still equal 6. So our identity element, element for multiplication and division is the number 1. Okay. Now we also need to have a look at what happens when we are trying to multiply and divide using zero. So the multiplication and division properties of zero. Okay, so um, let me just go. Okay, so multiplying any number by zero. I want you to imagine that you have got five bowls. Okay, and in each bowl there are two sweets right? So how many sweets do you have all together? Okay, so you know that you work that out by saying 5 multiplied by 2. So there's 5 bowls and there are 2 sweets in each bowl and that gives us 10 sweets all together. Okay, now 
those sweets get eaten. You still have five bowls, but the sweets have all been eaten now. So now you have five bowls and there are no sweets in each of those bowls. So how many sweets do you have altogether? You have zero sweets. So when you multiply something by zero, like in this case we have five bowls, but in each bowl there were no sweets, there were zero sweets. We multiply by zero and that tells us that altogether we have no sweets, okay? So when we're multiplying by zero, we end up with zero as our final answer. Okay, now let's have a look at what happens when we... Um, so this is for multiplying any number by zero. Now we're going to go and divide, or before we do that though, I just want to also point out that it also goes the other way around. Remember, the, the commutative property of multiplication says that I can do this the other way around. I can also say zero times five, and I'll get the same answer. So zero multiplied by five is also zero sweets. Okay, so either way, it doesn't matter which way around we do it, Either way, we will get the same answer. If we multiply a number by zero, or if we multiply zero by a number, we will get zero. Okay. Now we're going to look at division with zero. Okay, now there are two, remember, division is not commutative. So it's not going to behave the same way if I have them switched around. So first we're going to look at an example where I have zero being divided by a number. Okay, so again, we're going to, um, Think about sweets and bowls. So you have 15 sweets all together and you want to divide these sweets into your five bowls. You still have five bowls and you've got 15 sweets that you're going to share out evenly into these five bowls. So we're going to say 15 divided by 5 and that gives us three sweets in each bowl. Okay. Now, again, the sweets get eaten. So you still have five bowls, but now you don't have any sweets to put into them. So we're going to take no sweets and divide it by the five bowls that we have and see how many sweets are going to end up in each bowl. Well, we didn't have any to put there, so there's going to be zero sweets in each bowl. Okay, so when we take zero and divide it by a number, we end up with zero because we are sharing zero amount of something between a certain number of people. We say, how much do they each get? Well, they each get nothing because there wasn't anything to give them in the first place. Okay, so when you divide zero by a number, we get zero. Same as when we multiply zero by a number or multiply a number by zero, we get zero. Okay, so you might think that the same thing would apply for division when we are dividing by zero if we have the other way around where we have the, the zero over here but remember unlike multiplication which was commutative division is not commutative so it's not going to necessarily behave the same way as what it did in this order so now let's think about an example where you have again 15 sweets okay and five bowls so you're going to divide your 15 sweets by the five bowls and that means you have three sweets in each bowl. Okay, but then uh, what happens is your bowls, uh, your bowls break. And now you suddenly don't have any bowls left. You still have the sweets, nobody has eaten the sweets, but you don't have any bowls left. So now, I'm asking you how many sweets are going to go into every bowl and you don't have any bowls to put them into so how are you going to work out how many sweets can go into each bowl you can't it's impossible okay so you can't work out if you try and say 15 divided by 0 the number of sweets we have divided by the number of bowls we have which is 0 then we, we try and to share these sweets into non-existent bowls we can't do that okay so I can't say how many sweets are going to be in every bowl because there aren't any bowls. And this is what we call undefined or imaginary. Okay, no, no, not imaginary, undefined. Okay, so we can't define it because there's no way of dividing something by zero. We just can't. Okay, there's another way of looking at this as well. And that is to say, if I have... Um, by using 
the, the fact that multiplication and division are inverse operations. So I can say, well, if I know that 12 divided by 4 is equal to 3, then I should also say, be able to say that 3 multiplied by 4 is equal to 12 because they are inverse operations. So if I do division, I can do the opposite for multiplication and it will I can take these two numbers and multiply them together and I should be able to get that number. Okay? So because they are inverse operations. So now let's have a look at trying to do that with zero. So if I try and say 12 divided by zero equals something and I want to see what that something is going to be. Then Using what we just did, for using the fact that multiplication and division are inverse operations, I should be able to say these two things multiply together. So 0 multiplied by that something should give me 12. But now we've got a problem because we just found out over here that any time I multiply by 0, what do I get? I get 0. I can't possibly multiply 0 by something and get 12. It's not going to happen. So this over here is impossible. It just can't happen. So therefore, it is undefined. We can't work it out. Okay. So you can't divide by zero. However, you can divide zero by a number and you can multiply by zero. Now we're going to look at some examples where we are going to actually use the properties of whole numbers. Okay, so uh, the first example is just a very simple 7 plus 8. Okay, so we've got 7 plus 8. Now this is like I said, very simple. I'm sure that you know the answer for this, but I want to show you that you can calculate this in more than one way by using the, the properties that we have learned. Okay. Now what we're going to do over here is we're going to use the associative property. We're going to say, I can group the numbers in different ways to be able to make it easier for myself to work out. So I can group, I can say, well, over here, I've got a seven. Now, it's always easiest to add up to 10, right? And then to add something to 10. So if I know that I've got 7, what must I add to 7 to get 10? I need to add 3. So I'm going to take the 8 over here, which I'm adding to the 7, and I'm going to split it up into 3 and something else, because I want a 3 to go with the 7 over here. So I'm going to say over here, this is 7 plus, and then my 8 can be written as 3 plus 5 because 8 is the same as 3 plus 5. So I haven't changed anything. I've just written it in a slightly different form. Okay, remember here I'm just showing it slightly differently. Now the associative property says that I can group this differently. So I can say instead of grouping the 3 with a 5, I can rather group the 3 with a 7 instead. So I'm going to say over here 7 plus 3 and then add the 5. And then when I add the 7 and the 3, I get 10 plus 5, and that gives me 15. So here I was using the associative property to regroup this in a way that would help me to actually be able to work it out. I could also have done it like this. I could have said 7 plus 8, and I could have split the 7 up and said, what do I need to add to 8 to get 10? I need to add 2 to 8, so I'm going to split the 7 up into 5 plus 2 and then add the 8. And then over here, I can say, well, now I'm going to regroup this. I'm going to put the 2 with the 8 instead of having it with a 5. So I have 5 plus, and then in brackets, 2 plus 8. So I'm grouping the 2 and the 8 together because then I can add it and get 10. So that means I have 5 plus 10, which also gives me 15. So I could have done it either way. doesn't matter which way you do it. Um, but either way, I ended up adding 10 to 5, giving me 15. Okay, now this is something that you aren't necessarily going to actually write out every time. It's not, um, you don't have to show those steps. These are, thing, these are tools that you can use to work things out in your head. 
it just helps to know that you can do this. Okay, so that's the first example. Now we're going to look at another example where we've got 5 multiplied by 27 times 2. Now in this one over here, if I try and work out 5 times 27, that's going to be rather complicated. Okay, even 27 times 2 is going to be rather complicated. So now we're going to use the, the commutative law. And the commutative law says that when I'm multiplying or adding, in this case I'm multiplying, I can rearrange, I can move things around. So I am going to rearrange this and put the 5 and the 2 together because I know what 5 times 2 is and I know that 5 times 2 is a nice number. Okay, so I'm going to multiply those together first. So I'm going to move it so that those are together first. So I'm going to have 5 times 2 times 27. And then I can say, well, I know that 5 times 2 is 10 times 27 and that gives me 270. Now it suddenly became, becomes so much easier than trying to work this out separately. Okay, so um, the commutative law can be used to rearrange things to make your life easier so that you can multiply things together that will be easier for you and then make your end multiplication easier as well. Okay, so that is example two. Let's have a look at another example. Here we've got 7 multiplied by 18. Okay, well 7 times 18, we are going to be using the distributive law. By first, first of all, 7 times 18 is, in your head, not going to be very easy to do. Okay, but what we can do is we can say that 18 is the same as 10 plus 8. Okay. And now I can distribute the multiplication into that bracket and I can say I know that that is going to multiply in there and that means I can multiply them separately. So this is 7 times 10 plus 7 times 8. And now I can do them separately. So that means I have 70 plus 56. Okay. And now that I've got 70 plus 56, I can then use the associative law again. So I can say, well... 70 plus 56 is maybe a little bit complicated to do. It's not too bad. You can do it. It's, it's maybe would be easier to know that we can get up to 100 and then we can just add to 100 because that'll be easier, right? So what do I need to add to 70 to get 100? I need to add 30. So I want to see if I can split this up into 30 and something else. So I have 70 plus and I'm going to split this up into 30 plus 26. And then I can regroup and I can say, this is 70 plus 30 plus 26. It means the same thing because remember the associative law, we can do that. When we are adding, we can regroup things. And then we can say this is 100 plus 26, which gives us 126. Okay. Again, that is something you can do in your head. You don't have to actually show it, but it does help to know about it. Right. Now I'm going to give you some time to work on a few more questions of your own where you're going to be applying these laws yourself. Okay? So here you have got six different questions. I'm going to let you work on each of them separately. So I'm going to give you for the first one. Uh, let me just, there we go. Okay, for the first one I'm going to give you one minute.
Okay, hopefully you are done with that one by now. So let's go and go through that example. So question A, you had 35 plus 42 plus 5. Now, hopefully you saw that in this example, you've got the 35 and the 5, which will actually be easier to add together because 5 plus 5 we know makes 10. So it's going to take us to the next 10. So I'm going to rearrange these. I'm going to use the commutative law and I'm going to rearrange them into 35 plus 5 and then add the 42. So I'm going to add these together first and that gives me 40 plus 42. And now 40 plus 42 is much easier to work out. So I can now see that that is going to be 82. So you should have got 82 for that example. Right, now I'm going to give you the next example to do. Okay, so for this example, you've got 51 times 30 times 0 times 42 times 76. Again, I'm going to give you one minute for this example. Okay, you should hopefully be done with that one again. So let's go and look at that. So for question B, we had 51 times 30 times 0 times 42 times 76. Okay, now you should already have seen straight away, everything is multiplication and right in the middle there, I've got a 0. Now, the commutative law says that I can move things around. So I can put the 0 last and I can say, okay, I've got 51 times 30 times 42 times 76 times 0 and then I can say well I can group those together and then so I've got something with this would all multiply out and give me one one number multiplied by 0 and we said that you can multiply any number by 0 and the answer that you get will always be 0. You don't have to write the step over here though because you can go straight to here because you know if everything is multiplication then you know that because you can move it around, everything is going to end up being multiplied by that zero. And so you're going to end up with a zero. So as soon as you have times zero in a question like this, you can change it to zero. So long as there's no addition or subtraction, and so long as it's not being divided by in any way, because you can't divide by zero, but then you can just multiply everything by zero and you will get zero. Right, question C. Over here, okay, here you've got 69 plus 38. Again, I'm going to give you one minute to work on that. Okay, you should hopefully be done with that. So let's go through that example. So you had 69 plus 38. 
Okay, so in this example, you should be able to see that the 69 is really nice and close to the 70. All we need to do is add one. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this 38 and I'm going to split it up into one and something else. So I'm going to say I've got 69 plus the 38 I can split up into one and 37. Okay, because then I can take that one and I can add it to the 69 and I can say this is going to be 69 plus one and then the 37 is on its own over there. Now I've got 70 plus 37. And now, again, I'm going to use the associative law and I'm going to say I can split this up and I can put it, the 37 I can split up and I can put the 30 with the 70 because I want to get to 100 now. So I've got 70 plus, and this is 30 plus seven, and then I'm going to put the 70 and the 30 together giving me 100. And then that gives me 100 plus 7, which is 107. So that is what you should have got for question C. Okay, next we're going to go on to question D. So in question D, you're working out 168 divided by 4. And again, I'm going to give you one minute to work on this. Okay, you should be done with that by now. So let's go and have a look at it and go through it. So we've got 168 divided by four. Okay, so first of all, 168 divided by four on it, as, it, it, as it stands over there is not too easy to do on its own. But what we can do is we can split up the 168 into 160 plus eight and divide by four by using the distributive law. So I'm going to distribute the four into that bracket because I, I can with division, remember when the bracket is before the division sign. So here I can do it. So I'm going to divide the 160 by four and the eight by four separately. So 160 divided by four, I know that 16 divided by four is four. So 160 divided by four will be 40. Plus eight divided by four is nice and easy. That is just two. And that gives me an answer of 42. Okay, now we're going to go on to question E. So for question E, you've got 29 multiplied by eight. You again have one minute to work on this. Okay, you should be done with that one by now. So let's go through that example. Okay, so for question E, I'm actually going to show you two different ways of doing this one. So we've got 29 multiplied by 8. 
Okay, so first of all, I'm going to split the 29 up, just like I did with this one. I'm going to split it up, and I'm going to change it to 20 plus 9 times 8. And then I'm going to work each of those out. So 20 times 8 plus 9 times 8. I'm distributing the 8 into the bracket over there. And that gives me 160 plus 72. And then I can split that 72 up and say I need 40 to get to 200. So I'm going to change the 72 to 40 plus 32. So that's 160 plus 40 plus 32, which I can then share like this. 160 plus 40 plus 32, that gives me 200 plus 32, which is 232. Okay, so that works and that's great, but there's actually a quicker way of doing it. And that is to use subtraction instead of addition. So instead of saying 29 is the same as 20 plus 9, I'm going to say that 29 is the same as 30 minus 1. So this is 30 minus 1 times 8. Okay, now I'm still going to use distribution, the distributive law over here. I'm going to say 30 times 8 minus 1 times 8. That gives me 240 minus 8 which if I subtract 240 minus 8, I get 232. Okay, so there is more than one way of doing this. Sometimes changing your number to something that uses subtraction will actually work better and make it quicker for you than using addition. Okay, so it is useful to know about that as well. And then we've got our last question, which is question F. Okay, so in this one, I am again going to give you one minute to work on it. Okay, you should hopefully be done with that one. So now we're going to go through that example. So for question F, we have got 37 times 3 plus 37 times 7. Now in this example, I'm actually going to use the distributive law backwards. I'm going to take it, and at the moment it's kind of in its expanded form, and I'm going to put it back into brackets. And I'm going to say I've got 37 in both of these has been multiplied by something. So I'm going to put the 37 over here and multiply it. I'm going to add the 3 and the 7 inside the brackets. Because it's the same thing. I'm just doing it the opposite way around to what we were doing when we were given the brackets and we split it up. But in some cases it actually is easier to do it like this because if you look 3 and 7 they add up to 10. And multiplying by 10 is always easier. So 37 times 10 is going to give us 370. So that is how you could do question F using the distributive law kind of backwards. Okay, so that is basically all the properties that we need to look at for the whole numbers. Now that we've learned the concepts in this lesson, it's important to practice, practice, practice. If you haven't already got the worksheet that goes with this video, you can find it by clicking on the link in the description below. The worksheet comes with an extra exercise full of questions for you to work on to master the concepts covered in this lesson. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button so that others can benefit from it too. Also be sure to subscribe so that you can easily find my other lessons and hit the bell so that you will get notified about lessons as I upload them.